Hello, I am Pastor Rick Bachman from the First United Church of Christ in Marshtown, Iowa. And I'm doing something that we haven't done before, but we've been talking about, and that's trying to do video services. Uh, given the circumstances that we are facing today, we may be faced with doing this on a regular basis, at least for the interim. And that's kind of scary for some of you, and I know for many of you, you're facing something that you've never faced before, and that is a long-term possibility of not being able to meet in your places of worship, which leaves us with issues like this where what can we do for alternatives? And so I want to bring a message to you that uh, is on my heart because of the times that we live in, and the title of this message is Fearing Fear, and appropriate, perhaps, for the time that we live in. And I'll be honest with you, I think we oftentimes take for granted times of peace, times of tranquility where we do not have to face hard times. And when we get into situations like this, where outcomes are uncertain, where timelines are not set in stone, we begin to become fearful. We become uncertain as to how we can and do proceed. And so it is that we should turn to the Bible. The Bible has and always will be my first course of seeking advice, for seeking comfort, for seeking the ability. Let me read from Isaiah 41, verses 10 through 14. And I'm reading from the English Standard Version. For those of you who may find this a little unusual, it's a version that my church knows quite well that I love. And uh, it just reads a little more like you and I talk. So, for Isaiah says, Fear not, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Behold, all who are incensed against you shall be put to shame and confounded. Those who strive against you shall be nothing and shall perish. You shall seek those who contend with you, but you shall not find them. Those who are at war against you shall not... Be as nothing at all, for I, the Lord your God, hold your right hand. It is I who say to you, Fear not, I am the one who helps. Fear not, you worm Jacob, you men of Israel. I am the one who helps you, declares the Lord. Your Redeemer is the Holy One of Israel. The Bible talks an awful lot about fear, and it talks a lot about the situations that we find ourselves in. And not surprising, because fear is probably one of the strongest and most basic emotions we have. I'll be honest with you, everyone hearing my voice has, in some point in time, faced fear. Some of you more than others. Some of you, fear takes over and takes a stranglehold and puts it on your life. And unfortunately, fear has an ability to do that. But the truth of it is, Everyone seems to handle fear a little differently. And we all know people who we think is fearless. And we wonder, how is it that they can handle fear so well? And some of us, maybe not so well. And it's a little bit like everything else. It is not the individual so much as it is the attitude of the individual. I have been called fearless. I was a police officer. I faced some very dangerous situations in my life, and the people who were around me have referred to me as fearless. The truth of it is, I am far from fearless. In fact, I think at certain points in my life, I probably was the most fearful person I knew. I was in completely and extremely afraid of many things. So what changed? Well, a lot of things really, but then in a lot of reality, nothing. Are you confused yet? Well, my church is used to being confused when I reach, so join the club. The situations that cause your life fear will always exist. And for me, the same things that I was fearful of as a child still exist. The truth of it is, what is a full-grown man, I might still have good reason to be afraid of some of the things that I was afraid of. The biggest single change in my life was that of becoming a Christian. 
It's because as a Christian, I have a connection with a God. Not just a God, but the God. The God of the universe. The King of Kings. The Lord of Lords. And that connection, according to the Bible, gives me assurance. Psalm 18, 118, verses 4 through 9 reads, Let those who fear the Lord say, His steadfast love endures forever. Out of my distress I called on the Lord, and the Lord answered me and set me free. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can man do? The Lord is on my side as my helper. I shall look in triumph over those who hate me. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in man. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in princes. You see, fear only has control over you if you allow it to have. To be honest with you, if I acknowledge that God is in control of my life and that no matter what man or nature throws at me, God is still, in fact, in control. I love sharing the story about, and it's a true story, of a missionary lady in Africa who went about villages preaching the word of God, preaching salvation through Jesus Christ. And a local warlord became very upset by this. And so he confronted this missionary lady, an elderly woman, and says, you will either stop preaching Jesus, or I will kill you this very moment. The missionary lady, an elderly woman, smiled, patted a bag, and says, my funeral dress is in this bag. If you kill me this instant, I will, in that instant, be with my Lord Jesus Christ. You will bless me. If, however, you do not kill me, I am going to leave your presence and go out and preach Jesus Christ because he is my Lord, my Savior, and I want everyone to know the peace that they can have in him. Now that warlord left very frustrated. He was used to using fear and intimidation to control people. And suddenly he found a woman that was without fear. Now, was she not afraid? I suspect she probably was. No one looks at death without any feelings. But she understood that death was only a transition from this earth to the presence of Jesus Christ. And so regardless of what that warlord chose to do, she was comfortable in the fact that she was with Jesus Christ. She could be trusting in him, regardless of what happens. And I'll tell you the truth. She is like many women and men that came before her. Most of you have heard the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Faced with a fiery furnace if they didn't bow down and worship God, or a king as God. And there was no options. You either worship this king and call him a god, or we put you in a fiery furnace and you burn to death in a slow and painful way. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego's answer was quick and easy. Not so much that I think it would be easy to say, but they said, you know, our God is fully capable of delivering us from your furnace. However, even if he doesn't, we cannot, because we serve the one and only God, the only one worthy of worship. We cannot worship you and serve him too. So put us in your fiery furnace. God will or could deliver us. But if he doesn't, we're comfortable with that too. You see, when the outcome is always going to be that your presence is with God, there's not a whole lot of things that man can put in front of you that can scare you, that can overwhelm you. And the truth of it is, we watched, as the Bible says, those three men enter a furnace, and the king and his people watched as four men walked about freely, unhurt. We see what happens when men do not fear men, but God. They could have denied Christ and easily avoided the furnace. But the truth of it is, they would have had to deny Christ to do it. And there is not a whole lot of Christians 
who, if you truly believe in Christ, would be willing to give up and deny Christ for that reason. There's a story of a little boy who was walking home from school one day and a bad thunderstorm blew up and there was thunder and there was lightning and heavy winds and her, his mother just got very concerned and so she went driving looking for the little boy and walking home knowing that he would just be terrified by this horrendous thunderstorm because she was terrified of this horrendous thunderstorm. When she finally saw the young boy, there was a bolt of lightning and the boy froze, looked up to the sky and smiled. He walked a few more steps and a few moments later, another bolt of lightning happened and he did the same thing. He froze, looked up at the sky and smiled. The mother kind of confused, got him in the car, protected and said, exactly what's going on here? Why were you stopping every time the lightning? He says. Well, he says, it looked like God was taking my picture, so I wanted the photographs to come out good, so I always wanted to smile. You see that child, Meshach and Abednego, Shadrach, and that old missionary woman all knew something. God was God. Nothing that circumstances around them could change. They understood that they were in the presence of God. They understood that the fact of the matter was God still was in control. Now, the truth of it is, fear has a way of working into our lives. And it causes a lot of anxiety. It causes us to be rational. And oftentimes, it exaggerates the problem to a point where we start fearing things that aren't even going to be real. As a young boy, I said I was fearful. And I remember in my little town of Liscombe, I was charged with taking out the garbage at night when it was dark. And our burn barrel was a good 50 to 100 yards out in the yard, away from the house. And there were no lights. There were no street lights at that time. And so in total darkness, I had to carry the garbage out to the burn barrel in total darkness. And as a little boy, I remember being so afraid. Of what? I suspect as a little boy, I was afraid of just about everything and anything, from the boogeyman to serial killers to just whatever else might be creeping in the dark. And the thing of it is, some of those fears were irrational. Some of those fears, perhaps, not all that irrational because you don't always know what's in the dark. Fast forward a few years, and I'm a police officer, a young man, and I'm walking the streets of Eldora, and I hear a strange noise in a very dark alley. And I have to go down in that alley and find out what that noise was and investigate. The same fear that clutched my heart as a little boy was still very present as a police officer. Now granted, I was a grown man. I was carrying a weapon. But fear does not really take those things into consideration. There's still that apprehension of what is down there? What is there? What is it possible going to happen when I go down there? Fear lives on the doubt, on the questioning. It lives on the ability to say, you have no idea what is going to face you at just this moment. And that's the danger of fear. Fear has a disabling effect on people. It causes you to doubt God. It sometimes lets our imagination run wild. It makes adults fear the boogeyman. And in some cases, they will become so controlled by fear that they'll be ineffective to deal with their real life situations around them. Which is sad, because the truth of the matter is, this is nothing new. Indeed, in 1933, in the midst of a depression, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, in his inaugural address, addressed fear. And he made a statement that is quite famous. It's also quite accurate. So, regardless of your politics, I want to read it because what he said is so accurate. 
He says, so first of all, let me assert my firm belief that the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. Nameless, unreasoning, unjustified terror, which paralyzes needed efforts to convert and retreat into advance. In every dark hour of our national life, a leadership of frankness and of vigor has been met with the understanding and support of the people themselves, which is essential to victory. And I am convinced that you will again give that support to the leadership in this critical days. What Franklin Delano Roosevelt was saying, we should not fear fear. Because it is so disabling, because it causes us to be inappropriately inactive, it causes us to flee or deny or to in any way deal with a situation that's not productive. When you have fear in control, usually there are one of two actions. One of frozen inability to act or react, or the other is to panic. Panic suddenly realizes that you have two years supply of toilet paper and that's not enough. Neither of these reactions are good. Now, I'm a big believer in using precautions, being prepared, but we can't live in denial. We also cannot live in panic. We only make the crisis worse. Throughout history, crises have happened time and time again, and people have often reacted in these same ways in these times of crises. Sadly, these two responses to fear only exasperate the problem. They don't help. 2 Timothy 1, verses 6 through 8 says, For this reason I remind you to fan into the flame the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of his hands. For God gave us a spirit not of fear, but of power, and of love and self-control. Therefore, do not be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord nor of me, his prisoner, but share in the suffering of the gospel for the power of God. God does not want his people living in fear. Sure, we live in uncertain times, and I cannot tell you that nothing terrible will happen to you in the next months ahead. But I can assure you God is God. He is still in control. He still sits upon a throne, and nothing this world can throw at us will change that. As Christians, I were called to be light of the world, that light on the hill. We should be examples to the world around us. We should not be dealing in denial or, pandemic, or panic. The pandemic we face today will pass. How soon and how severe, no one can say for certain. But it will pass. We are not facing the end of the world. For some of us, that might be a newsflash, because if you listen to the media, occasionally they will tell you, the, the sky is falling, we are dying, we're all going to die. Well, it's not going to happen. How severe it is going to be, I don't know, and I'm not going to downgrade it. I am not going to be a denial. I'm not going to suggest that we should not take the precautions that the government suggests we should. But I am going to tell you this pandemic will pass, and God will still be upon his throne. There's a story of a young man who went into the stock market in a brokerage firm, and as in most cases, you do a lot of studying. You do a lot of preparing to be in a job like that. And in his classroom, they suggested to him that he take on little three-by-five note cards, and when he gets to his place of work, he puts them all over his computer, to remind him of the things he's supposed to do and just all the things that he's got to remember to do the job right. And anyone who's ever started a new job knows that overwhelming feeling of knowing I'm certainly forgetting something. Well, this poor young man plastered his computer screen full of cards and a co-worker seeing that and seeing what the cards were saying wrote his own three by five note card went over with a little tape and put it on the center of his screen. That three by five note card read only one word, breathe. Take a deep breath. 
this can be handled, it can be surmised, it can be overcome. Today, that may be the word you need to hear. We need to understand this is not the end of the world. This is not going to be our final hour. We need to know the sky is not falling. We should remain calm and we should deal with the situation and show Christ's love in every way. We should live lives that show God's love rather than panic or denial. And this is a secondary thought. For those of you who are panic buying, stop it. Just stop it. If you have an entire room full of toilet paper, you are only giving credibility to the people who have always looked at you and thought, that person is so full of, well, you know what I'm talking about. Now, do you really want to give them that kind of credibility? Do you want to confirm their suspicions that you are that full of it? I'm just saying, you don't need 10 years supply of toilet paper to get through a pandemic. It's not going to last that long. Panic leads us to do foolish and crazy things. As Christians today, I want to come to you with love, with reassurance, and with the knowledge that our God will carry us through this pandemic. He will get us through. We are called to live lives free of fear. We do not have to be controlled by the fear that goes on around us. Pandemics come and go. This is not the first pandemic this world has ever seen. It certainly will not be the last pandemic this world sees. What will remain, however, is how you and I respond during it. What will remain is the witness that we show the world of who we trust and why we trust in God. So my friends, in this time of need, please remember that you are, in fact, the light on the hill. And for many of you who are not able to go to church, I'm hoping these videos will help. I'm hoping to continue this and do it in a more broader fashion. Uh, I want to be able to do this so that for folks who cannot make it to a service, they still can hear the Word of God. If you would like, my church is the First United Church of Christ. We're here in Marshalltown, Iowa. We're at 202 South 4th Avenue, or did I say South? Uh, yeah, South 4th Avenue, Marshalltown. Uh, we're right across the post office. If you enjoyed this message, if it helped you in any way, and you feel you'd like to, please support my church. Uh, we are going to be in a financial bind like many churches are because we're not taking up a weekly offering. We're not going to be seeing the type of incomes that we normally would. So it's going to create a challenge. So if you'd like to help us, certainly feel free to do that. If God is leading you to do so, support the church, the First United Church of Christ. They're wonderful people. They love me dearly, and I love the fact that I'm able to serve them, and hopefully now, through these videos, perhaps even serve a wider uh, folks. So as we go out today, trust God. Don't panic. Don't be frozen in fear. But live your life knowing that your God is still in control. Thank you.